Hello, everybody. How are you? Well, I am as blessed as blessed can be. Um, today, I want to speak to you on the subject of um, loving everybody is hard. Now, before we get into the message, I went back to 242 Church for the first time in over a month, um, with, where um, on the same day, um, just a few days before today, there was a guest pastor, and the guest pastor spoke about um, mental health. You are love. And um, here's what I took notes so far um, at home. Um, and I'm going to give it to you in three parts um, as to why um, everybody is supposed to be love and how um, we need to take better care of our mental health um, before things will get even worse. Um, number one is um, you respond to his love by your heavenly father with Jesus. And as I said, when you prayed your prayer, say, Jesus, I need you. And that simple prayer will approach your attention that it will come to you eventually. Then I said, number two, you sit in silence and be quiet with God. In other words, don't do anything except to just be in his presence. You be with him and only him all day long, 24 hours a day, seven days a week um, for 365 days in one year before you do just about anything. And that includes going to church. And finally, number three, commit to overcoming lies with the truth of God. How is that? You have to commit to reading the Bible each and every day, like one script. It can be like one scripture, or it could be one chapter, or two scriptures, or two chapters, of, or everything, depending on how much you know about the passages of scriptures. And if you do all that, then um, you could be a well-loved and well-regarded person um, who, um, who has a lot of morals, a lot of standards, and even um, can share this community spirit, religious spirit with your family, your friends, and the one and your and the mentors who helped you. Now let's get on with the series of messages, now, shall we? This one is called "Loving Everybody Is Hard." Now, loving others can be very hard at times. A common phrase to refer to those people that we consistently find ourselves difficult to love extra grace required people. But even people we generally like can sometimes be hard to love. The main reason we run into difficulties in loving others is sin, both ours and that of those we attempt to love. Humans are fallen creatures. Apart from God and his power, we are selfish and loving ourselves comes much more naturally than loving everybody. However, I just want you to know love is not selfish. It seeks the best for others. If you have your Bible, your Bible app, please mark 1 Corinthians 13, 5 and Philippians 2, 3. Now, battling both our own selfishness and sin tendencies and tolerating with selfishness and sin ten tendencies of others can make love one chore. And think about it. Another reason it can be extremely hard for everybody to love everybody is that we sometimes misunderstand or miss the mark what true love is. 
We tend to think of love as primarily emotional response when love in itself is not a feeling. The problem is that we cannot always control our emotions, um, especially to those um, guys um, who cannot control um, their own wives the same way wives can't control their own um, husbands in that way. However, we can certainly control what we do because of the emotions, but too often the emotions themselves just happen. When the kind of love God calls us to have for others is the same kind that he of love that he has for us. It's agape love, the, the, the essence of which is sacrifice. God's love for all of us is a sacrificial love, the kind that sent him to the cross for our sins. He didn't save us because we were lovable. No, he saved us because he, his love caused him to sacrifice himself for us. The question is, do we love everybody enough to sacrifice himself for everybody? Another question is, do we love everybody enough to sacrifice for them, especially when at times they are not lovable? Loving others is, a ma is all about the will and the, volition, and the volition, not the emotions. Now, God died uh, for all of us at our worst, in the midst of our sin, when we're totally unlovable. Please mark Romans 5, 8 and John 15, 13. When we make sacrifices in order to love somebody, we get a glimpse of the depths of God's love for everybody, and we also reflect him to the world. Now, if you go to John 13, 34, 35, Jesus told his disciples, a new command I give you, love one another as I love you, so you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Now, notice, now I want you to notice he did not say feeling love toward one another when he did say love one he didn't say that but but when he did say love one another he said that in fact he commanded an action not a feeling like i have told you from the very beginning now part of the difficulty of loving everybody is that we often try to do it on our own, whipping up feelings of love where none exist. This can lead to hypocrisy and play acting the part of the loving person when our hearts are really cold towards him or her. We must understand that we cannot live, that we cannot love apart from God. That's not the reason at all. The reason is when we remain in Jesus. John 15, and the Holy Spirit, and another reason is the Holy Spirit remains in us that we are able to bear the fruit of love. Galatians 5, 23. Now, we are told that God is love and that our love is, for one another is both enabled by God and the response to his love in us in 1 John 4 through 7 through 12. Thanks, um, Jason. I know it can be very hard, but believe it or not, you too are loved just like everybody else, especially the folks in Lincoln too. Um, I agree. However, it can be hard 
for everybody to trust on God and to give ourselves to him when he also allows this difficulty so that his glory can be seen all the more. When we love harder people or or, it's, or it's our call to love, even especially when we do not have the urge to do it, we demonstrate our reliances on God and only God and his power to be displayed in and through us. And finally, the reason loving others is hard is because they are human and so are we. However, in this difficulty, we come to better appreciate the qualities of God's love for us. And when we love everybody in spite of their lack of lovability, God's spirit shines through. He is, in other words, he is glorified. Others are edified and the world sees Christ in us. How do you think of what is, how do you think about that? How do you like that? Well, I can tell you um, it, it is, we are many times when we try to make new friends every year, whether if it's right here on social media, can be either Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or Snapchat, um, we sometimes get very excited when at times we become very, very, very nervous because you never know how others would say in a private inbox or on a public heading from week to week. How would you feel if somebody had inboxed you week after week and say how, and and you have been um, asked if they love you back, unlike others who don't love you. You have to think about this on your own. How can you hold on to the, to the love when nobody loves you first? You have to think about this. The re well, and I have to be honest with you, Especially at times, most people who used to use Facebook or who haven't used Facebook at all, um, and for them, um, deactivating their own account is the, the it's not the reason you have been responsible for this. You're not the reason at all because um, you either have said something that was um, absolutely bad or um, you have um, been um, lying or you're telling the truth um, or um, you just gossiped or tamed the volcano um, and stuff like that. No, 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 no. That's not the reason at all and far from it. The reason, um, these people have deactivated their own Facebook is because they get sick and tired of all the drama that has been going on themselves and everybody else uh, as to what they have been talking about on the same subject over and over and over again that, is in, that appears in the news of what's going on right here that nobody should ever have to hear. I don't care how these folks would ever, ever say it. I don't care how anybody um, would uh, try to uh, throw you under the bus or you or they would ask you to throw your throw in the towel. No, no, no. Those are not the reasons why. The real reason is um, you are always loved. You are the most valuable, yet most wonderful, yet beloved person on, not just on social media, but everywhere. Could, could, could be with your family, could be with your friends. 
or it could be with your church and in the community. Regardless as to what people say about you or how they deactivate their own Facebook accounts, you are still the most loved person. And if you've got somebody um, who doesn't know how to love each other in return, or if you have somebody um, who don't know how to love um, yourself or to them the same way you love them, get them to, please. It's not too much to ask of you. That is all there is to it. Well, I have preached enough and I have given you a good enough message for this purpose and this reason. Thank you very much and I will see you next week. Goodbye.